Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. Today we're doing a little bit of work for Dirt Perfect and something else I'll tell you in just a second. We're taking the CD500 you see sitting behind me in the equipment shed. And then we're taking Plan B up to the shop and I'm gonna try my hand at a little bit of MIG welding today because the chain setup just isn't quite working the way we anticipated on this trailer. So we're gonna take it up to the shop and I'm gonna cut it up and weld it a little bit and try to find a way to work best for me whenever I'm trucking with it. The other thing, I saw something pop up on Marketplace the other day, Facebook Marketplace, and uh, I bought it. So we're gonna go pick something up later today too. And I think you guys will be excited about it. Step one, let's see if she starts. So a few things right as we get started here. Today should be Christmas Eve. If my post dates, if I'm remembering the date correctly, which means tomorrow should be Christmas. So I just want to say Merry Christmas. Hope everybody's having an awesome holiday season. The other thing is this right here. Yeah, we're slipping into slow mode. So I got a new GoPro as I try to build. I want a two camera system when I make these videos. Anyway, I shot this entire video in slow mo on accident. I was able to render most of it back to normal, but there's going to be a little bit more slow-mo than I usually do in this video because there are a couple spots where I just kind of liked it. So if you're thinking, that's a lot of slow-mo, well, that's why. The other thing I want to tell you, because it is Christmas week, I don't have any video for you guys on Sunday. We've been busy just like everybody else has. But we do plan on going live on Sunday, plan on doing a live stream in the evening. We're going to try to anyway. Don't be mad if we don't, but uh, hopefully we can make that happen. So right out of the gate here, you're going to see exactly why we need to go ahead and take this headache rack off. Anytime you want to raise or lower the trailer, which is pretty crucial when it comes to hooking the trailer up, you got to take those two bottom boomers out of the way so they don't bust your knuckles on them. There's a few little other odds and ends we're going to work on today as well. That headache rack came off of his old low boy. And he took it off of there whenever he put the toolbox system on for the speed binders. So he thought he'd just kind of throw it on here to see if it would work. This is your reminder, by the way, that if you get a ripper, please don't test it out in the area where we park the trucks. That's just hypothetical, of course. So we'll get up to the shop and see if we can find a solution for this. So I figured the best place to start would be empty out the toolbox and see what we even have in there. Two brake chambers, 12 binders, a tape measure that said Sean. We don't have anybody that works for us named Sean, so not really sure where that came from. And a couple other odds and ends. We really only need eight binders on this trailer. That would allow us to haul the 304 and the skid steer at the same time. And with the built-in ratchet straps on the trailer for the boom and the bucket, we'd be good to go. So I picked out the best of the bunch. Went ahead and took them apart, took them over to the bench top wire wheel, figured if I got them out, might as well clean them up. And then sprayed them down with some fluid film and get us through the winter. Mike does plan on upgrading the trailer to speed binders in the near future, though. So I mentioned I bought a new GoPro earlier. I also bought a new wireless mic. It's just part of trying to grow your YouTube channel. You go through growing pains, like forgetting to connect your wireless mic because it connects a little bit differently than the one you previously had. 
What Real Life Mike was trying to tell you there with the broken microphone was that that latch has been broken since Mike has the trailer. We've never used it. That lid is heavy enough. It's never come up on its own. Since it's never worked, it's just in the way. I decided to go ahead and shave it off and clean it up a little bit. There's some of those cool slow-mo shots I was telling you about. skid steer on here before and I can get them both on here but the tracks for the skid steer stop back in here somewhere and the counterweight gets close to hitting the binder storage or the old headache rack that we had on here so with this off here I can back the skid steer up about another foot foot and a half and that'll allow me to get the 304 and the skid steer on and fold the ramps down nice and neat and it'll fit so much more comfortable also when I haul the 120 and the 140 the breakover point the bucket always ends up being right where that rack was at and it just kind of made it awkward sketchy that leaves me a little bit more room on the deck and i can break over up here with the bucket and uh, make it a little bit more comfortable the point is we're trying to make the whole deck usable when you got a small deck you got to use the whole deck on his smaller pencil hitch he pulls behind his uh, pickup truck he's got about two six, which would work pretty good we could probably get one you know, depending on how we do it need to get about eight in there that comes pretty close to that trailer there I don't I want to leave all the knuckle room I can hmm but I'll tell you what I know exactly what I want to do for the chains I'm gonna steal Loggerway uses a similar style on their chains and it looks like it works pretty good let me go ahead and make a real quick easy modification for the chain box and then we'll see maybe we do have some room in there for some binders simple solution. Chains I need. Sorry. The hooks are all right there and when you close it the simple solutions are often the best I'll tell you that. With that being said man I'm gonna do it on the other side too. Not that we have this many chains but it'd be nice to have the chains on each side so I don't do 27 laps around the trailer if I forget them. And even if you put a long chain in. Still pulled out of there. I'm liking the way that looks. This one might not be as even though. Be okay. 
I decided to try to just reuse some of this tubing that was on the headache rack and just cut it off. There's just a couple welds holding each one on. It didn't take much. It's just one by two tubing to hold the binders. Or boomers. You notice I keep switching back and forth between the two phrases or two words. And I'm sure there's a technical term for a boomer, boomer or a binder. But honestly, there's a lot of things I care about in life, but that's not even in my top 100. So if I say binder, I mean boomer. If I say boomer, I mean binder. You guys know what we're talking about. The things that tie equipment down. I'd like to get four inside the toolbox. Like I said, eight would be ideal on this trailer, but typically we're just going to need four for one piece of equipment. That's the most common type of haul we do with this trailer. So the other four that we don't use very often, we might as well tuck them away in the toolbox, nice and neat and out of the weather. But still easy to get to. I don't really have much of a plan. You can probably see that. I'm just laying stuff out and drawing on it with a paint pen. But I think that's what I like most about fabricating. And we're going to use fabricating pretty loosely here. But it is what I like about it. You just kind of make it work. And if it doesn't, no big deal. Cut it apart. Reweld it. Anyway, see if we can get this thing put together. And yes, I'll give you an up close look at these welds. Don't worry. They look as bad up close as they do at a distance. And we'll see if we can get these things to fit in the toolbox. seen worse. I've also seen a lot better, but I've definitely seen worse. Hey, when's Aaron coming back? He needs to hurry. Wait, are you on camera? Hold on. Have you ever done YouTube? You ever tried this? You got to make sure people are in the frame. YouTube, never heard of it. Well, y'all try it sometime. I think you'd be good at it. There was a lot of ingenious people over there. There's some. Also heard you can't believe everything you see on YouTube. It's true. Yeah. Now, I told him Aaron will have done this. If you do a close-up, they'll probably know that's not true. <laughs> so. Think for what it is, it'll work. Yeah, it'll be fine. Chains, simple, yeah. Mm -hmm. Larger weight inspiration right there. Mm -hmm. You got a stacks and you got a chain box. <laughs> God. On here's, here's this though. So I want to keep eight binders on here because then I can do the 304 and the skid steer. Okay. But I want to put four in here because we hardly ever use that many. Just to keep them in out of the weather. So I was like, well, this will work perfect. It's genius. Yeah, I'll see that, Kevin. I slipped a little bit. Now these two work great. Now in hindsight, I should just put tubing and tubing and just put those together and you could sit them in there and they'd slip and do whatever they want. I think you, I mean, you got this much overlap though. You I can think I'm still cut it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you've already hacked here, so why not hack Hacked? That? <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, I drew a line in every, look at this, I mean, look. I, I think you paid attention. Look. You did pay attention in kindergarten. I think you did follow your line. Kindergarten. 
<laughs> I'm more of a hindsight guy myself. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a forward thinker. Because <laughs> uh, this, this trailer will eventually be pulled by Lieutenant Dan. And we're going, and oh, so when Lieutenant Dan gets it, it gets speed binders. Yes. Well, that's what it is. It's not about <laughs> the driver, it's Lieutenant about the truck Dan folding. will have uh, <laughs> an inverter on it. Okay. All I ended up having to do was just notch a couple inches out of that plate so it can sit down in there a little bit lower. And that gave the boomer a little bit more wiggle room, which allowed it to get around that lip pretty easily. But like I said, if it does become a problem, the great thing about building things, all I gotta do is grab a grinding wheel or cutoff wheel and just notch a little bit out and we can fix it. But with it dropped down a little bit and a little bit more room to move around, it slides in pretty nice. I think that'll work fine. I'm gonna put something there. I keep almost stepping down that hole whenever I'm loading and offloading stuff. I'm breaking that on leg. First off, we'll start with the trailer. Doesn't this look nice, clean, and shaven? Now I can get the skid steer and the 304 up here comfortably, and the ramps folded down the way they're supposed to be. Chains are nice and organized here. They're super easy to just grab. 
exactly what I need. We've got the four boomers in here. I've got the other four tucked in here as well for now. We plan on putting some sleeves over there at some point for the speed binders. And then we've got the Leg Breaker 5000. We went ahead and took the Leg Breaker 5000 off. Put this expanded metal on. A little bit of paint. Looks good. Looks real good. We'll do some more work on it on the future. Things to keep in mind. This is the Plan B trailer, and the B does not stand for boy. That's at the top of the priority list. It stands for backup. It's the backup trailer, so we just kind of work on it when we have time. And every time we do it, it gets a little bit better, so I'm excited about that. This is what I ended up buying. Now, if you can't tell because the way she's all folded up right now, it is a three-point forklift. You see the pins here? And that's where the three-point top link would go. Now, obviously, that's a hydraulic hose. Goes to the tractor, hydraulic cylinder. You see the mast, you see the forks. They're on a backer plate right there. She's kind of all folded up the way it came off the trailer. Now you guys know we have a lot of fabrication projects coming up this winter we're trying to get to and there should be materials in there for three of them. I plan on taking that backer plate and forks off, putting a quick attach bracket on the back, putting a channel on the back side, welding some tabs on the back of those forks so they're actual true slider forks. And then having a set of forks for the 755, for the 755, that was tough to say. So we should be able to get that out of it. There is some really good heavy steel here. We should be able to use this for the road drag for sure, no problems. Then I can get a cutting edge and some other things to uh, polish the road drag up, make it real nice. But this is some good heavy material we can use for the road drag. And he also said that cylinder is good. Now that is a pretty big cylinder. You guys know I'm trying to build a dump trailer for behind the 755 as well. So we might be able to get that cylinder work. I don't know, that thing is, is pretty big. We might have to ditch that plan. Honestly, I just bought it for the force, but there's a lot of material there for some of the other projects we have going on, so I just couldn't pass it up. And if you're wondering how much I paid, 350, I paid $350 for that. And if you pay attention to the price of forks or the price of implements, I think you'd agree that's a pretty good price for everything we got there. Mike was nice enough to let me borrow the truck. I'm gonna top it off with fuel, obviously, to say thanks. And he also helped me pour the YouTube yacht the other day, so just because he's been helping me out a lot lately and he let me go borrow this, I'm not even putting in today's shop time on the time card. You know what, I just, a fella's gotta say thanks every now and then and try to pay it back the best he can. He also let me use the skid steer to offload this. He doesn't know he let me use the skid steer to offload this, but uh, you know, he'll figure it out. Anyway, it's been raining for the past, I don't know, one or two days maybe, so the pond should have quite a bit more water in it. We'll do a pond update on the next upcoming video. What's that going to be? I don't know. I, I don't know. And that's, you know, the not knowing the future is kind of exciting sometimes. We'll have to see what that brings. Maybe a barn, maybe some ICF floor system, maybe working for Mike. I don't know. How are you guys liking the one take outros? It feels awkward, but that's also me. So I guess it kind of feels like me, which is what the channel is. My name is on the banner. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.